Okay. So I have been wanting to make a, a video for a short while and mostly just kind of as a marker point, just a, a starting point video. Um, it's not right as I'm starting, but it is kind of um, not very far along down the road of learning Korean. And I wanted to have sort of a record, sort of an overview of how I got into it and kind of what led me up eventually to the most recent um, development of my Korean learning journey, I guess. And that has been ending up with the MIA mass immersion approach, um, a sort of AK. AG or AKATT ACAT sort of approach from uh, from the mass immersion approach and uh, yeah so basically as a surprise to not very many people I got into K-pop a while ago um, it really caught me by surprise I you know, I wasn't exactly the kind of person that to ever see myself getting into K-pop. I was always listening to obscure electronic music when I was younger. Um, you know, a lot of like Boards of Canada was my favorite uh, electronic group. Lots of Aphex Twin. You know, weird stuff. Uh, definitely, you know, weird European uh, things. And um, I don't know. Event. So what? How I got started into listening to K-pop? I, I I saw somebody playing Osu. Uh, for those of you don't, who don't know, it is a Japanese rhythm game for weebs, where you uh, essentially play uh, these clicking maps in time. It's a rhythm game. Uh, you click inside the circles and move your mouse cursor around and uh, and most of the music is from anime and things like that so I didn't really listen to I didn't really watch a lot of anime um, or any rather you know I like Akira and uh, Ghost in a Shell that's pretty much where it ends but um, I was playing through this stuff and I came across this song that was something that I had never heard before and it was a song called um, Bad Boy by Red Velvet now <laughs> at first I was like holy crap like this uh, this like R&B flavor um, the production on the beat was really good um, it sounded very American to me um, and turns out that was produced by an American uh, production group um, but like just the like the sheer I don't know compelling just how compelling it was um, the whole package you know these beautiful girls and sing they're really great singers which I was appreciating and they're singing like this really hip stuff um, I was like whoa okay is this k-pop um, you know, it drew me to look into it more. And then uh, one thing, you know, leads to another down that road. And I was, I had listened to something like, I think, I think Spotify was telling me I listened to 40,000 minutes of basically just K-pop in one year. Um, after that, uh, I listened to it a lot. Um, and after listening to a lot of that, you know, you kind of get curious about all, all the other sort of uh, culture around that. And a lot of these groups have these vlog style videos where they just hang out and, um, you know, just bullshit with each other. Um, and, you know, just it's it's just blogging while they're going out doing their activities their tours their shows um all that 
Um, and then also on the variety shows. Okay, so the variety show was the first time that I saw the Korean culture outside of just these K-pop groups because I, I, we saw these hosts um, who it's still in the entertainment industry, but they're you know a lot of them were not K-pop stars. Some of them were, but um, you know I, was, I saw it's known here as Knowing Bros. I can't remember the Korean name for it. But, you know, it's like this mock school thing where they have people, the guests come, they're like uh, exchange students from another school, but they're like the, you know, the K-pop group or the actors or whatever. So I found, you know, a place to watch these online. And I found that the humor was like, even even though I was just getting the humor from translating, uh, you know, the I was watching the subs. And in English, and I, I wasn't even really interested in learning Korean at that point. Um, this is, you know, maybe five months down my journey of listening to K-pop. Uh, but reading the subs, they were, they were describing a lot of like word jokes, and wordplay, uh, and puns and things. And uh, I am kind of a sucker for puns, so I had my curiosity just peaked a little bit like okay they're making all of these really funny jokes i was laughing at it because they were explaining the joke to me i felt like a total dork um but uh anyway i keep i kept listening to these and watching these uh, uh variety shows and and began to listen to the sounds of the language a little bit more you know before that it was the music that drew me in um i didn't know i didn't have a clue what they're saying except for the few English words a lot of k-pop is sprinkled uh, in with a lot of English phrases and like the chorus is often in English the title of the song is usually in English for uh, some of the big groups um, but I was I was beginning to hear the language and really felt like uh, beautiful to me you know the just the aesthetic of the the sounds um, I just grew to really appreciate that. Um, so after doing that for, after getting into those shows, then, you know, I was convincing, I was like, I was making my friends, my coworkers at work, listening to K-pop, uh, <laughs> over the speakers. Um, and I got, I I was exposing people around me to K-pop being really like unapologetically annoying about it because I thought it was funny that I was in a K-pop, you know, I'm, I had, um, I had, I was 29 years old and I was getting into this like music for teenage girls, uh, for the most part, <laughs> but to me, you know, uh, I don't want to make this all about K-pop, but I, for me, it was an important thing it was like a turning point in my life of realizing that I was going to be able to do something that I didn't expect that's the takeaway from all this I didn't expect to get into K-pop um, but I I saw all of these like jazz uh, these jazz chord progressions and crazy modulations in the chords and amazing harmonies like you know six part harmonies from these groups in this in this is pop music like th there's this there's no way you'd hear this in America so that's really what drew me into it. And then I got suckered in uh, and down the rabbit hole. Okay, I got it. I'm, I'm into this now. I, I, I became a fan of a couple of groups and I wanted to start, you know, I wanted, I was curious about the language. So I almost as a joke, almost a little bit ironically, I started uh, looking up, you know, how to say hello in Korean. Right. Annyeong. Uh, I, okay, I know I said I wasn't going to uh, speak any Korean in this video. And that's it. I'm not going to... This isn't like one of those videos where I'm going to like show you where my level is. Um, so this... I started uh, saying, you know, doing that in... Let's see. This is... Would have been the end of 2018. Um very end we're talking like December I was 
I had just gotten into K-pop a couple of months ago, before that, December of 2018, and I started looking up like, okay, how to say hello. Um, I thought it was funny, um, and I downloaded uh, Duolingo, and I was like, okay, well, you know, I, I might as well just dabble in it, and D Duolingo is kind of a dabbling app. It's kind of designed for that. Uh, it's not going to get you anywhere. Uh, and I got pretty bored of it um, very quickly. So then uh, what I ended up doing, uh, some some things in life got in the way. And because I wasn't learning too much, I dropped it and put it aside. Um, for And I moved to a different state. Um, and I started picking up uh, the urge again because I didn't stop listening to K-pop. I, that I carried with me. Um, and this time I looked up a little bit. I did a little research. I thought, okay, I need to know. I need This time I need a little bit better approach. So I did some research online and found that what everybody was talking about for beginners was talk to me in Korean and lingo dear for on the app side um, and not Duolingo. So I deleted Duolingo and I started studying Lingo Deer and also tried to start learning Hangul, the writing system. Um, and so I ended up buying the Talk to Me in Korean level one book and the workbook um, and I know it's like it's not really uh, I didn't know too much about it but I, I knew that they were the first you know grammar series so you know for those of you who don't know I mean you've if you're if you're interested in Korean you've probably seen this uh, but then I also got the workbook and I thought okay I am I want to be a little bit serious about this and so <laughs> I got the workbook. I'm in it. I basically, you know, I did like three lessons and I did like five groups of lessons on Lingo Deer. And I, again, I, I think I started, so I started going to school um, to study industrial automation. And I quickly realized, okay, I, yeah, I, I'm not going to be able to study both at the same time. Just where I was mentally I just didn't uh, wasn't going to be able to handle all of it uh, so I put that aside again this was uh, around June of last year so June of 2019 and um, I still kept up my desire to uh, be watching these uh, variety shows I started watching Running Man a lot and Running Man uh, didn't really have much to do it wasn't a focus on the the idols there as guests it was more about like them you know all these comedians having fun with guests you know and and it was it was much more about the fun of it so I started getting really motivated obviously continuing to listen to K-pop by, I was inspired by Running Man because I was seeing these really f hilarious people, um, and uh, and it was my first kind of uh, moving outside of just K-pop, you know. And I I uh, I guess that lasted a couple of uh, of months. Um, and then it finally, I, you know, the, I, I started again this year with, with learning Korean. And it was in early March. Um, was it early March? Yeah, early March. It's now the beginning of May. So it's been a couple of months of some pretty serious studying for, with the... Um, with the resources that I had. I went through the Talk to Me in Korean uh, level one and including the workbook. I, I went through all the exercises um, for practice and I think that was good. I think that was good 
for what I was doing. It was the best that I that I had. I didn't know any better, and it was like it was a way for me to sort of grasp this new language in a way that I could understand. You know, it's very different from English. So I went through all that, but I was I was I was now you know on a roll. A couple of months ago when I started this, I I made the decision. I'm in it. You know, I am. Uh, I committed. I decided I'm doing this, and there was basically nothing that was going to get in my way when I when I started. So I went through the grammar and was also looking at um, um, oh yeah, I guess I should also mention <laughs> I was watching Produce 48 uh, it's basically like reality TV show about this K-pop group that was forming I was watching you know, these old reruns of it and I was inspired by these K-pop idols from Japan who are learning Korean uh, just in the few months of the training in the show in the, in the time that the show took place and I was like Oh my gosh, these these people can do this. They're they're training hard. They're learning all this new stuff, and they're learning Korean. Okay, I could do that. You know, I felt like a bit of a lame ass because I wasn't doing it. And uh, fast forward twenty twenty, you know, from anywhere else in time, we have this coronavirus thing where everything's turned upside down. A lot of free time, not a lot of socializing. Um. So, yeah, I decided I could absolutely, absolutely learn this. And there was, I was planning on meeting up with some friends um, a month after my birthday. In, so my birthday's in June, and we were going to be meeting up in July. And I thought, okay, I've got like four months until my birthday. Um, I'm just going to give it a really good go. I'm going to give it all I got. Um, and basically I, um, yeah, so where was it? Yeah, I kind of got lost. Um, I started back up with Lingo Deer 2. I eventually dropped that because it was a little confusing for me. Lingo Deer is, um, I don't know all of the honorifics systems well enough yet, um, but I think the, uh, the Lingo Deer uses the the formal honorifics, and Talk to Me Korean uses the polite honorifics. So the conjugations and stuff are a little bit different. And I decided to just stick with one. So Talk to Me in Korean it was. Um, and I was also watching videos from Professor Yoon, um, Korean Uni, and Go Billy Korean. And, um, you know, these were YouTubers that were helping me, like, flesh out the stuff that I was learning and talk to me in Korean. I wanted to make it through, I wanted to create a foundation so that I didn't feel so lost, you know. That was the thing that I fell into the first couple of times where I tried learning, was that I didn't have anything to anchor myself on. Um, and other than the music that I had been listening to and a, a little bit of, you know, being familiar with the sound a little bit. Um, so I wanted to have this foundation and go through this whole book, Talk to Me in Korean Grammar Level 1. Um, and I did. I went through it and I ordered the second one. The or Actually, no, I, this, I realized <laughs> I realized that they have all of the grammar lessons for free on their website with a, like a lesson uh, where they go through, they have some banter um, and they talk through it. So I didn't buy the second level and I, I don't think I'll buy the other one. But what I did buy was the uh, my first 500 Korean words because I realized that vocabulary was something that I was left completely lost on after going through that grammar level one um, I saw a video by uh, Jauma Jauma NYC I think these you know language videos had been starting to pop up in my YouTube algorithm and stuff 
Um, he was trying to learn Spanish in like one week. So he, he was trying to just memorize like he was it was like a little, you know, experiment. Like, can I learn Spanish by memorizing, you know, a thousand words or two thousand words or something in a week? Uh, the answer uh, not was, you know, spoiler alert, not really. But um, he did manage to memorize a lot of words, and and he was using Anki. I never heard about Anki before, so I I was inspired by that to start doing vocab, and got into doing Anki uh, to make flashcards, the space repetition system, um, and. Uh, so I started doing a little bit of the, the Anki flashcards and quickly bought this first 500 Korean words because I I didn't I'd seen some lists of uh, frequency lists they call them um, the most common words and I I didn't quite understand some of the conjugations and things this is still I was still working my way through the first level one book um, and. I just wanted some structure and something that was like that would maybe fit in well with what I had been learning. So I went with the talk to me in Korean, my first 500 Korean words, uh, and I am currently working through that. Um, I'm on day 18, basically 10 words per day, um, and I've been making flashcards for every word that I don't understand or that I don't know. Um, and skipping the ones that I don't care about. I don't need to know what a hair dryer is. Um, although I pr will probably pick it up just uh, because of the type of content that I watch. <laughs> um, so yeah, I started doing Anki and I started realizing that I could actually memorize stuff. I had never really thought that I would be good at memorizing um, because it was kind of hard, you know, it's just kind of difficult but Anki made it easy you know it's like it's just reminding you at the right time I don't have a problem with doing it every day I was already you know stu trying to study Korean uh, for uh, I don't know half an hour and so now uh, it, this had turned into like studying grammar for about an hour between like watching YouTube videos for review and then doing Anki, making flashcards, and then doing review for half an hour. So I was studying now for about two hours a day. Um, and then I found uh, a video by Motivate Korean called uh, Repetitive Listening. And he was talking about how the key to getting better was repetitive listening and to find like these clips of native speakers that have voices that you like, not necessarily about the content, you know, because it's not important, but voices that you like and listen to it over and over again. We're talking like a hundred times. Um, <laughs> and for me, I tried listening to some stuff and it was a little overwhelming. I eventually found some shorter ones that were just like five minutes and just started trying to listen to it at work. Because uh, at, at one of my jobs, I have plenty of time to listen to it um, but I didn't quite see the benefit I guess yet but I'm still at this point now in this past couple of months I've been constantly looking for new ways to develop my Korean speaking um, ability and my learning ability uh, to further improve the way that I learn because I I realize that I don't know enough to know if I'm getting it right or not I don't know enough to know if this is good if this is good a good way of learning so I've been continually keeping my mind open to try new stuff and changing my approach uh, changing the way I made Anki flashcards um, here and there and then somebody came I was reading a reddit thread um, basically it's one of the only reasons that I use reddit right now is for uh, keeping up with some k-pop news and korean news or like korean language uh stuff um and i found somebody recommending to somebody else that they go a cat all korean all the time um and i looked into it and realized that i recognized the person in the video 
um, who was talking about AJET. Um, and I'd kind of seen the word agent, you know, A-J-A-T-T, uh, around, and but realized I saw Matt versus Japan. I'd seen some YouTube videos of him, like, um, you know, speaking what sounds to me like perfect Japanese, um, and then hearing other people uh, commend him on his level of Japanese. So I was like, okay, so this is obviously somebody who took it to a high level. Um, and throughout this, um, throughout my past couple of months, my I've been trying to figure out where exactly do I want to aim for, for learning Korean. And I was watching a bunch of these uh, MIA videos um, and realized like, okay, this is like, this is kind of the perfect solution for someone like me. I like the structure, but I also like how freeform it is at the same time. It, you can be creative with the way that you pull sentences, uh, with the way that you find vocab, um, and then just the idea of listening to it all the time. It's like kind of, I'm, I'm an all or nothing kind of person <laughs> and I don't want to choose nothing. And I hate dabbling, uh, Unless, you know, I mean, I don't hate dabbling, but like I will dabble, but then I'll just put it down and, and I'll be done. You know, that I do that with so many things over my life. Um, but I wanted to be into this and I wanted to develop a foundation so that I could reach a fairly high level. I wanted to not just be able to, you know, get by if I visited Korea. I didn't want to just go to my Korean, uh, a local Korean food place and order some food, you know, and have the, the waitress go like, oh, that's cute, you know, uh, it's nice. But, uh, but I wanted to be able to consume media made for natives, you know, native Korean speakers. And not just the media, but I, you know, in jumping into all this, I've become more interested in the, the culture and the history. I've learned a bunch about the food um, and then some of the like the regional history the history of the country itself you know the wars uh, with uh, with the different warring groups all around you know the Korean Peninsula um, you know I just kind of feel like this interest uh, for the people so when I saw a video about you know what uh, the MIA approach offers, I, I kind of realized that th this is, this would be the way for me to reach th that level of fluency where I can feel like I understand, um, you know, media and not just media, but like conversations and, um, information from that's designed for and from native speakers. Uh, and that's what I, that's what I wanted to be able to do. Uh, whether or not I take it to like a professional technical level, I think I'll approach that when I get there, but that won't be, I, that won't be a difficult task if I can get up to that certain level of proficiency. So I, yeah, I dove into the website and I started uh, learning about the different Anki add-ons and uh, how I could kind of fix my Anki deck because it was pretty inefficient the way I was doing it. I had a lot of, I used the hard button a lot because I didn't want to forget stuff. Um, <laughs> and I just kind of didn't have like a set way of making my flashcards. Uh, so I've begun the, the process of switching that stuff over. And, um, and then also you know, downloading, uh, like I recently got a subscription to, to Viki, which has a bunch of Korean dramas and, uh, shows and stuff. Um, and they have Korean subtitles and that was important to me that they have Korean subtitles. Um, and because I wanted to, if I was going to use subtitles, I wanted to start like weaning myself off of using English subtitles. Um, unless I was doing it a little bit as a review after really chewing through a bunch of other stuff or you know just not use 
English subtitles very much. And and if I was going to use subtitles, why not use Korean subtitles? You know, it's, a lot of this stuff is really fast for me. So that's still consuming it. Um, and then I also got a um, I got my I got a V Live the V Live app on my phone so I can watch. Uh, you know, a lot of the idols and groups and stuff, they have like interviews or they'll just be like hanging out. And they use a lot of really sort of casual language and, um, you know, nothing too deep. And so it's, it's really stuff that I feel like would be accessible to me. And, um, and at this point, you know, uh, I've realized that I'm already at a point where I've, I'm, I'm, I've got my toes in, and I feel a little bit of a firm foundation. I know some basic conjugations for verbs, and I know some of the particles, topic marking particles, object, subject marking particles, and um, some of the you know the basic word order. Um, and now I have a sort. I'm growing a basic vocabulary of some common words. And now when I listen to like a V Live or a video, or uh, the other day I was looking up. Uh, weather report and I was listening to it really intently and realizing I was picking up all kinds of words I was recognizing some of the numbers uh, which I totally struggle with but um, I was recognizing some of the numbers the days the, the weather you know rain uh, and you know I was listening to a audio clip um, which is audio clip is a program or it's a it's an app from Naver, I think it's by Naver, and it is a bunch of podcasts basically. But I was listening to one who was interviewing, you know, and I was recognizing, I was following along with this part of this conversation where he was saying, "Now that you're a mother, uh, you know, and you're at home, uh, does mom or dad do the cooking for the baby? You know, now that now that you guys have a kid, uh, she got and she said they were both busy, um, but that she, so she looks for stuff that's fast." Uh, and I realized, you know, and then, and then she said <laughs> that she likes, uh, that the, the kid likes cabbage. Um, and, uh, oh, moo. What's the English word for moo? <laughs> uh, yeah, the vegetable, it's like white on the inside. It's kind of crunchy. Anyway, I've even forgot the uh, English word for for that uh, like cabbage and egg and um, and some other things I was realizing that I was completely for the first time in my life I was completely following this short bit of this conversation just out like in the wild this was meant for natives this is I even though it was only a I, I didn't understand every word I understood enough of the words to pick out that the basic arc of that little conversation and some of the vocab. I recognize I've been learning a lot of the foods because I work at a grocery store in the, in the produce section. So I'm learning, <laughs> learning, uh, you know, all the words for, you know, corn, uh, potatoes, sweet potatoes, like yams, um, uh, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, apples, banana you know all of these fruits and vegetables i'm learning and so this this was like my wheelhouse this is my chance to shine i was listening and figuring out all this uh it was like this is this just happened today by the way um and it's like a small victory and it got me really jazzed because um i only realized this because i had just started doing a lot of immersion stuff i, I went out to go play some disc golf I walked, you know, about 15 minutes to the course and was playing around and just listening to this podcast um, and trying to listen closely um, and hear, pick out grammar forms that I know and try to pick out vocab the words that I know. But um, yeah, it was a huge success, uh, just like a small success that I could take pride in today because I've been focusing uh, so um, that's where I am today 
and uh, I'm basically pretty happy with the current plan that I have, which is, but I've I've begun to modify my my plan for the future and like starting basically today uh, to ease into this ACAT method with the MIA approach and um, I'm going to be continuing with the, the grammar but I'm going to be doing less of like the I, I have a notebook that I've been f I've been writing notes in I've been taking a ton of notes and I don't you know I definitely don't go back and look at my notes I've never done that in my life um, but I am looking at uh I'm uh, I'm looking at taking less of the notes for the grammar and trying to like conjugate all this stuff and make little sentences, and because I'm kind of comfortable just knowing how it is right now and being able to recognize it um, when I hear people speaking, um, you know, recognize that oh that's a noun with the uh, object particle that to me that's enough sometimes and or this you know this means like uh also you know depending on whether you put after a noun i know how to conjugate that after uh uh you know verb and and so i'm 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 gonna focus less on note taking and trying to make sentences um and focus a little more on just getting the input you know transition into increasing my input throughout the day and make sure that I'm keeping up on my Anki flashcards now that I've got some tools that are helping um, to make that process easier and not stress so much about the words that are hard to learn because I have some cards today that went into leech mode um, and I'm not worried about them. You know, like uh, for some reason I forget the word for receiving a gift, uh, to receive a gift. Right now, I keep forgetting it, so I'm not uh, too worried about it. I know how to give a gift, <laughs> or you know, I know how to say that. Uh, so that's not like that's not a huge deal to me. Um, and I, I, you know, I've basically, I've, I feel like I've been given permission to do that, to just go, eh, you know, if if something's really tough, either change the card up try to find a different way to do it um, put it back in and if it doesn't stick oh well you know you'll come across it later that's how I think now is I am here to do what I can with what I have and build up my vocab with what is going to stick because the the more I build it up I'm gonna be building this foundation and this uh, center this root this this thing um, stronger and stronger more robust so that other things will stick to it you know it'd be like katamari is that or is that the <laughs> is that the name of the game uh you like roll around the stuff and it picks up things you know and eventually it becomes really big and it'll just pick up all kinds of stuff that's kind of what i'm hoping will eventually happen and it's all i have, i already feel like it's happening because when i do learn vocab all of these things are sticking now together um and it it's, feels like I'm learning in chunks rather than little snippets. And, um, yeah, eventually I'm going to be moving towards sentence mining. Um, right now, I feel like I don't know enough vocab and I don't know enough grammar to feel comfortable um, adding sentences into my Anki deck. And by that time, by the time I get ready for that, I'm hoping um, to have... Uh, while well, I'm planning on having my Anki deck prepared for that, you know, I'll start making uh, the the right uh, card type so that I can do that, and um, hopefully have media uh, figured out. You know, I, I know there are ways to download uh, you know media and stuff. It's not quite as much out there for Korean as there is Japanese, but I am. Um, I'm, you know, there is a lot of stuff out there like dramas, and so I just need to figure out how to download download those videos 
with the subtitles and uh, start sentence mining from you know dramas that I'm watch that I will watch because uh, I just started getting into some of that and I can get behind it. Some of it's a little cringy. I'm like physically cringing because it's like really cheesy romantic comedy stuff. So <laughs> I'm like I'm hoping to find some other um, some other types of dramas uh, that are interesting to me. Uh, and would have the types of sentences that I'm looking for. So, yeah, that's my plan. Um, as of right now, you know, I know a few hundred words. I am halfway through the level two grammar book from Talk to Me in Korean. Uh, you know, I use the website. Um, and I paid for a premium membership instead of buying the book. And I think that's good. There's a lot of like premium content, like a lot of listening practice stuff that is sort of designed with their curriculum in mind. So I figure right now it's good for me. Um, I'm going to keep learning more grammar. Um, and yeah, you know, in a few months, I'll probably have another video to make um, and to talk about my experience with transitioning into the. Um, MIA approach. Um, I am looking forward to it. So, until then, uh, we'll see what happens. I'll see you in a few months.